chains. Knock up is good. They're getting the damage down. There's a good red buff there as well. Flash forward, another flash. The red buff is ticking. Miryu does pick up that kill. Enough flash, enough flash. I'm, I'm the one, I'm the one. Nice. Oh, oh nice. all right. I thought. As you can see, Miru finally coming in, steals away at the quickness, trying to jump in here on top of the tanks. He got Levi going down first. There's a good needlework here. Good scatter the weak, though. Gings them all right back into the hands of the Zaya. Hardy is dead. They're going to try to get in with a flashback to Storm. Ooh, that was good damage, though, coming in from Bond, but it's just too little, too late. Triple kill comes in here for Levi. Gam get everything. They'll push up mid, and they'll end the game. Welcome back to Worlds 2023. I love rolling into a post game after a video package like that because we were talking on the desk after Silas gets a double kill, double buff right out the gate. It's easy peasy, right? Miru and R7, they're going to roll over Gam and just completely take over the game. Then they rolled over. If it had ended right there. I mean, look, I want to bring this straight up because it was a little bit of a cheeky job and play the knockup that actually helped get that second kill. I really thought the game was going to be over there, Mark. Well, yeah, this is exactly what you want to see. You get your Silas going. The matchups versus Sintra can be tough early on in the range versus melee matchups. The fact that you get that early should be off to the races now. You can survive. You get Merc treads early on. You don't care what she does anymore. You start running around the map. You get into side lanes versus She's terrible in side lanes versus Silas. Yep. You're like, our game plan is online now. Double buff, double kill. Surely we just continue to win out from here. I mean, even the fact that, like, in that play, Levi's going in, but just underestimates or overestimates his damage because, like, a potion is running. It slips away, and the second one goes over. Like, it should be over with those side lanes, like you're talking about. Gwen on one side, the other. I do think that, like, looking at things, maybe it's a little bit too much of an AP focus yeah. on yeah. that team. It makes it easier to itemize to play side lanes and neutralize that when you have double AP solos plus a Kaisa down on the bot side. Um, but yeah, overall, I just felt like the game stalled out after that. They weren't able to like convert that advantage around the map, and then it went into team fights where they really I mean, really listen, and I don't want to sound too catty because after those first few kills, it is definitely R7 that we're like slated to win. But the color palette that uh, R7 just started Boo. seeing was grayscale over and over Boo. and over. <laughs> Puns everywhere. You got them all except for top lane. You'll have to get a, a top pun, but that's really difficult with some of the names in that lane. Uh, I will say immediately three lanes, three kills back to Gam. It was like seven, eight minutes in. You yep. know, like this is just a disaster when you're talking about we're about to break out out of the laning phase and you instantly give kills back in every single one of them. It really just threw an immediate wrench in the game plan for the side of R7. Yeah, especially like I think like Levi has shown that he likes to play through topside in the early game, so that ends up happening again. But then here, R7 uh, end up going really, really deep, right? There's teleports coming in behind. They're what going into they the second thinking? tower. What were they right? thinking? Like, and, and well, they're thinking they're really upset because they couldn't just burst out that single player and get out, and they just kept going in and in and in. And it allowed time for the rotations to come in, the teleport flank uh, from Kiaya as well. And, and this is really where the game slipped. And it, I wonder how much this is overconfidence. You heard Audi in yesterday's yes. interview talking about how Vietnam's not a great region. We beat them before. We should beat them again. This kind of stuff. And very clearly, it felt like potentially some overconfidence, not respecting the laning of their opponents, not respecting also, the reactions. The, the bloodlust, right? Because specifically that tower dive, it really kind of indicated to me just where R7's head was at. They kept throwing themselves at Gam over and over and over. Now, to be fair, Gam opted into that play style as well and ultimately just came out on top over more of the fights. Yeah, I think, I think too, though, the fact that they are just sort of running at a straight line a lot of times at Gam is is not how you want to play the game. You're playing against Syndra and against Kai, uh, not Kaisa, uh, Zaya. Like the amount of times we saw Scout of the Week hitting three, four people, then Feathers like continuing to chain them. This is a game where you need to play through side lanes first, then collapse down. You need to look for flank angles, different ways to enter into a fight because if you line up three, four people in a row, I don't think you're ever coming out on top of that, especially when you're playing such a low range, like with melee mid, yeah. Kaisa on the bot side. You're going to get torn apart by a Syndra Zaya. Just before we talk about individual player here, I want to look at one more replay. The game ends. Ender, as it were, uh, the Baron that was secured there by Gam. I mean, what do you make of this, Mark? I just really like the aggressiveness out of this team going, starting the Baron, force them to walk forward like and you were saying, you, you want to split up more, and this forces R7 to face check you. Great flank there, able to come over the wall by Pallet, get everyone grouped up, and they had, still had to chase down a fair amount of time, but good decision to peel back onto Bong when he had his flank opportunity set up there, and just really good target selection. Yeah, and the difficulty is there when you're behind and your sort of four players can't group and hold their ground and fight, Bong coming in on a flank, 
isn't actually flanking anyone, you know? A, a flank works when you're pinching into the enemy. <laughs> it's when a the target enemy, dummy. can just run and turn around at you. It's like, oh, yeah, okay. We're just, it just doesn't work anymore. Yeah. No, it doesn't indeed. Uh, at the moment, you can see the players from game getting ready for game two. R7 have selected blue side. Just before we jump into that, let's take a moment to uh, take a look at the post-game breakdown. And then I want to focus in on Slater specifically. He was a player that we were, let's say, critical of coming into the day. I think in terms of this game, a lot was set up for him. But then once it was set up, he did land a lot of those punches. Yeah, he was big chilling through the early game. And yes. I think that's all we needed to see. A lot of the, you don't have to dominate the lane to be a good AD carry. You just have to not int. And the other day was an issue. <laughs> Today, nothing went wrong. Just got the push for free, comes into the team fights, and that's where he was doing so much damage. I think his feather use, playing with the Syndra, like I was talking about before, was very, very nice and made it almost impossible to actually get a uh, dive onto him in the back line. Yeah, really cool to see them bounce back here today for him especially. And overall, big wins for the format where yes. you have Team Wales often dropping game one because it's best of series. Now they can bounce back in theirs. And then here for, for Gam, potentially being able to find their footing, find what comps are working for them. Yeah, and for R7, can they bounce back in this series? You're looking at the drops right now. We're less than a minute to go before we head back up to Dagda and Ashin. Dagda was very concerned about that Zaya going over. If you translate what Dagda says and what he means, he was mad, he was angry, he was disappointed in R7, and it showed up. Slater dominated them. I'm putting words in his mouth because he's about to Look, speak. Look, <laughs> I'm fine giving over the Zaya, especially because we saw the Kai'Sa destroy Slater in lane. That's not my biggest issue. My issue is how heavy they went into AP on R7 side. I don't think going for the Gwen uh, and like going split push style is the way forward and here. Committing to it's just going to be A Ram. That's yes. how we're yes. playing is 5v5. And anytime people leave up Zaya Rakan, usually you pick one away in the first pick. And the fact that they gave the powerful lovers duo over is why you sound like Dagda. That's yeah. how he felt. Well, yeah, it's just not what you so see listen, usually Okay, worldwide. listen, final thoughts here. R7 picked blue side once again. If you were to hope for things to not see, you know, hope for corrections, what are you hoping yet for R7 before we hit to cast this? Uh, I like Ender's Call about splitting up your magic damage a little bit more. I do like the more aggressive 1-3-1 one one setups that they were trying to look for there, but a little bit more diversity in uh, damage type. If final you want to do really that, quick. you take the Zaya. Take the Zaya. Take the Zaya. Well, That's what we're going to find out. Dagda, let's find out what happens for Zaya and whether or not you're still mad. I'm mad, I'm sad, I'm angry, I'm disappointed, but I'm very happy to be back with Oshin here to take us into game number two. I'm hoping this will be a bit of a more of a solid draft coming into this, because I do think, again, like Zaya should be the higher priority coming into this uh, for or 7 You can see how good Slater had a performance on that. I just don't think the Kaisik can cut us when Zaya is still on the table. No, I completely agree, and we'll see now what they want to try to go for. So far, it is the exact same bands coming out here for both sides. Yeah, no difference. Six for six, and we'll see if the priority changes here for R7. They actually take the okay. Khan, so at least they're breaking up the lovers duo. Yeah, I still think Zaya is just kind of the, the cream of the crop when it comes into this meta. Because a lot of the times it's like, okay, well, who can really fight up against her? She does well against Ezreal. She does well against the Kai'Sa. Like, a lot of the only people that you'd kind of struggle against is something like a lane bully and the Caitlyn. But we haven't really seen teams willing to bring that out, despite the fact that they did get buffed. So it is going to be a swap of the supports. We're going to get the Rail coming in for Pallet. You're still going to get that Zaya. So, again, a very aggressive lane that you can look to play around this game if you want to. But to be honest, like, the top and mid lane played so well out for Gam. I wouldn't be surprised to continue to focus on solo lanes. Yeah, honestly, I feel like you're still looking at the same kind of issues right now as R7 for the moment. We'll see how the draft kind of changes if it does, but I mean, they're going to feel like they have to go back towards that Kai'Sa. Didn't really have the impact it needed to have in that first game. Now R7, do you change up the priority? Do you look for maybe a, you know, a much more higher priority in the top lane or mid lane rather than just going for that J4? Yeah, I think they'll probably just go back towards jungle. I thought they actually would take the J4, but they're going to swap it over towards the Lee Sin because you do leave the opportunity now for Levi to actually get his hands on the Jarvan. And I think when you've got the uh, the setup there, it can be absolutely fantastic to follow up with things with the Rel, but uh, not actually going to be the case. It looks like Cathy was like, hey, look, I'm super happy in the matchup we just had. So let's take this Syndra. Let's try and ban away some of these mid lane champions and even just pinch that pool that bit more and try and put Miru onto something that's a bit more uncomfortable because this is where we got to see the Ari ban and that kind of stuff come in here to just get Miru off of his champions that he likes. Absolutely. And I think as well, like we saw in the last one, you know, R7, they banned away a couple of different things in the jungle. They were happy to kind of take away things like the Lee Sin. They probably banned away the Jarvan this time. But I mean, the Wukong worked just fine for Levi. He was very, very happy with that. And again, like you mentioned, Gam now going back into that mid lane and saying, look, we've gotten the Syndra because we had a feeling they were going to ban it anyway. We'll ban away the mid lane picks and put Miru onto something he's just not comfortable on. Yeah, and again, you're kind of hit the nail on the head. Get rid of the junglers on the opposite side. But Levi, he's still at the Nocturne. He went towards the Wukong. I think you still have multiple different options that you can go for here. I think it, there is a question mark, though, whether you try to like ban away maybe the Cassante 
from Kiai in that top lane. Because although Bong did go for the counter pick in the Gwen, I don't think he looked particularly comfortable. Um, surprised though to see the LeBlanc ban. I actually thought we'd get the Ari ban because even though LeBlanc, I believe, was open in the last game, Miru didn't actually end up going for it. He wanted to go towards the uh, Silas instead, but we'll have to see when he knows that he's up against the Syndra, maybe that's where the LeBlanc comes out. That cannon ban tells me R7 wants Renekton. That's exactly what that tells me. The Rumble's gone, the cannon's gone. You would look for the Cassante for Gam, you would imagine, but the Renekton is still up and available, and I feel like that's what Bong is trying to lean towards. Yeah. They're calling it. Yeah, they're yeah. calling it, yeah. <laughs> I, th I do agree with you. I think they are looking at a Renekton. And again, it's kind of like, uh, okay, well, you can't really go for the Cassante. Because if you do end up in that position, well, then you put yourself in an uncomfortable spot. By the way, Briar isn't open for this, so yep. that's why I'm just not talking about it. But Cassante is uh, not able to deal with the Renekton because the Renekton takes Demolish, just looks for turret plates, and then gets that lead regardless. So it kind of shuts that down. Um, so I like the Jax pick kind of saying, hey, look, well, if you want to go for the Renekton, it's not the end of the world to have a Jax up against this. And there we are, Miru going back towards which I personally think is his strongest champion in the RA, so maybe this will give a bit of a stronger opposition for R7 in that mid-jungle. We'll see what they want to try and put on that top side. It won't be blind. They will know exactly what's coming into it, and they take the Cassante themselves. So, okay, they're happy with a, a weaker side lane in the, for the moment in the early game, but definitely going to have a lot more presence in those team fights if they want to try and dive in onto everyone's face. I like the Vi here for Levi. I think getting that lockdown on towards an Ari or a uh, Kaisa is always going to work out for you. Also, it's actually a pretty nice matchup into the Lee Sin as well. Because you end up getting the shields on the Vi, you've got a lot of upfront burst damage. It can be pretty difficult for the Lee Sin to duel you if you're not low already when they initially go into that trade. So Levi should have a decent matchup in towards the jungle and a very strong mid jungle as well. Yes. Like the, the point and click CC into the follow-up stun is going to be so much damage for Levi and Katy. That's the thing as well, because for Gam, they have multiple ways of catching out the Miru on the, on the mid lane. Whereas the other side, it's kind of land the charm or you're not really going to get much else out of it. That's kind of the, the whole setup here for R7 in those first few minutes. But again, they looked very bright in the first five, six of the first game. Then it kind of just didn't really do much with it. I want to see R7 be more proactive. But for Gam, I mean, they're very happy kind of letting this one go long again. Or I say long, it was only a 25, 26 minute game. But I mean, they're very happy to let this kind of go standard because they know how comfortable they are when they are, when they are able to garner these leads. Yeah, also when they get into team fights, it's just such an easy go button. So I do think a huge amount of this game is going to be defined by this mid jungle. Again, like if you can get in nice and early as a Lee Sinari, that's a lot of damage. Vice versa as well for a Vi and a Syndra. So it kind of feels like whoever gets control over mid can then have a lot of power point on the map to lean into the le to, to bot side, lean into top, like just have that advantage in that jungle matchup, which will mean so much coming into this. Yeah, absolutely. Well. R7, they find themselves at the edge of a cliff. They need to step up and away from the edge or they're just going to fall and be knocked out of Worlds 2023. Gam want to push them over that cliff. Gam want to put them in the ground and continue on their way with as little resistance as possible. Game one went to plan. We'll see how game two goes, but it's going to be all to play for R7, the Latin America representatives need to put everything on the pitch. They need to ha need to just give me something. They can't let this one go like game one did. Yeah, and I mean, look, MSI was a 2-1 in favor of R7, so they did give one across the GAM, but we'll have to see if they're going to be able to manage the reverse sweep, or if it is just going to be a case of, well, GAM are able to run away with this one. So, excited to see what R7 are going to be able to achieve here. Already, I think the comfort that Miru gets on this area is going to mean a huge amount for him, and I'm excited to see what he can try and achieve on this pick. See what he can connect up here. But of course, you can connect your League of Legends account with Prime Gaming to grab the exclusive Minions experimentation emote. No real experimenting coming out here today. And uh, kind of, when I, I was actually talking to our EVS guy, Arthur. Yeah. He was, I was asking him like, what crazy picks he wanted to see. He was saying Amumu support, which did come out in WQS. He actually didn't say support. He said, yeah. he said jungle, but it came out in support. And uh, he, says, he says he kind of wants to see Shaco. Feels like, feels like Shaco could be a bit of tech so we see all later. I'm saying is... <laughs> Kanavi yeah. has played Shaco in the past. Wrong. And <laughs> little tidbit for uh, when we move on is also practicing in solo queue. Ooh, so you, all I'm you saying keep is, that under your cap all now I'm for saying next is, week. <laughs> Shaco Oriana has become a bit of a combo that is real dumb because you can't see the Oriana ball in the Shaco when he right. goes invisible. So this is just Yumi a potential combo again. we might Yumi see. Twitch all yeah. over again. So dumb. But look, we'll see. Maybe we'll see it this weekend. Maybe we'll see it in, in Swiss. I don't know. Hopefully uh, JDG. But uh, I know our EVS guy Arthur will be uh, definitely looking out for that as we go through the, play, uh, through the stages. But 
Bit of an engaging bot side. Not really much else to really talk about. Again, with the Rakan and the Rel, we saw it in the last game. They're going to trade back CCs, and then they're just going to go back to, you know, kind of shake hands. All right, we're farming. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it is going to be a case of just trying to get control of the wave as well. Because you can see there, Palad is trying to use the crash down to also hit the wave at the same time. So he's kind of getting a double up for his book, where he goes in here, able to get the level up now as well. So going to be able to zone, say, on lines away. And I think that should kind of continue for a large portion of this, where you are just trying to play aggressive into this bot lane matchup, open up opportunities for a Levi to make something happen. Odie, though, three camp into mid. Can he try and make something happen here? He's at level three from Miru before he can really go for it. Very difficult to kind of get into position has to be here. A flash charm. Yeah, it has to be a flash charm. Maybe they'll look for it. But yeah, I mean, Katy is well used to these kind of situations and just says, nope, I know what this Lee Sin's going to try and do. So I'm just going to let you let you think you've got me and then just walk away. You'll see, though, Odie will spot out, though. OK, all of topside has been cleared out. So Bai is going to be on this bottom half of the map. So you do need to be careful if you're going to be, say, at War Lions. Immediately, you can also see Miro starting to lean towards that top side of his lane, not giving any opportunity for Levi to try and have any sort of counterplay. But Katy should actually be able to crash. Well, I was going to say should be able to crash this play. It's a bit of an awkward spot at the moment. Knock up does get landed here on the pallet, who takes a fair chunk of damage, and he knew with that passive proc being coming up now for Seo, had to flash away. So good trade here from R7 in the early game in the bot side. A lot better of a trade back than they did in game number one. Yeah, still though, you're now in a position where you are quite far forward in the lane and Levi is down here. So this is where it can be the downside of taking that aggressive trade. Slater and Pallet will be able to freeze this wave thanks to the fact the fight is here. Even Seo, like he's gone for a quick reset as well. So you're going to end up in a position where Slater can slow push this wave out, build up more of a gold lead and then get a better back on this, or sorry, better buy on his next back. So um, although it looks nice initially, it kind of puts them in a bit of an awkward spot here as this uh, lane plays out. Mm. See the catch out Levi. Both junglers now in mid. Neither kind of getting caught out. Now they do. There's the charm coming in. It's a 3v2 at the moment. Levi trying to see if he can get over the wall. Good flash, good Q. And Audi's just going to walk himself away with a little bit of damage on the backside of this. So again, R7 in the early game having decent trades coming up against Gam. Oh, oh just wide on that one. He has very little mana, though, so you can see Kaya trying to see if he can go for these trades, but um, with the wave as big as it is, he has to be careful about how far forward he does go. No one wants to eat their biscuits just yet. They're keeping them for after dinner. Gonna get the knockback. It's a level five for Bong. There's gonna be the E popped in there. The CC does get buffered, and now they may look for a bit of a trade. Another flash, but still no kill. R7 looking a little bit more comfortable so far in this early stage and getting much more advantages as a whole. Yeah, you can see there, nicely done by Bong, was able to deny the CC coming through from Kiaya and even managed to get the knockback onto him as the uh, the Crown of Strike is trying to hit. So good trade, has the Grasby and Dime, which is slowly topping him up in this lane as well. But you can see, regardless of that trade, Going in favor of Bong, there's still a very big lead going over in that top side. You'll be able to back here as Gaia, pick up your Sheen, and suddenly these trades become way more difficult for Bong to really take because you're just constantly, every time moving in, to auto attack and keep a proc that passive, you're just getting hit with a Sheen proc every single time. And I love what we're seeing from R7 in this early stage. It's cool, we got the flash in off the jungler, we got the flash top, we got priority bot. Immediately turn that into an objective because you know with the way Levi was pathing, he's not really going to be on this bot side, or even if he, if he is, it's not going to be very optimal for his pathing. So it definitely feels like they are going for the right decisions for the moment, as we can just see now a little bit of a trade back in this top side. The all out now available alongside that Grandmaster's might. And you can see now Bong just wants nothing to do with this. He may have to use his flash, but as a dash, it should just be fine. Yeah, Gerard already used his leap strike to get into position there, but it does mean you're very low under this tower. And one of the things is, well, we've just taken Dragon on bot side. I actually don't know where Levi is if I'm on R7. So that's where you can see, uh, despite the fact that Levi's on bot side, Bong is playing very safe in this lane, even getting a ward down into his own tribush just beside him to make sure that he's not going to be any sort of issues if Levi shows up. Well, thankfully for Bong, he should be able to clean up all these minions and get himself back up into some kind of uh, equal CS set up. Audi not quite level 6 just yet, waiting for those junglers to really hit it. Not really going to find anything from there. Miru almost getting his sweeper to catch out Kati for a little bit of a trade with a charm, but wasn't going to be. Now do they look for something in this bot side? Again, Audi would love to have his level 6 here to get that kick back on the Slater who does not have access to the Featherstorm. Yeah, I mean, the trade pattern there has actually shoved the wave though. Is Hang on. And the Q, they go in, flash burnt there by Slater. Pallet takes a fair chunk of damage as well. Not only the flash, but the ghost as well by Slater. And everything gets burnt here on the Gam bot lane. Yeah, Slater was trying to play up towards the top side of this lane because he knew Leon's was in the brush. So wanted to try and keep as much distance there, but actually means that he sets up if Odie is 
ever gank in the lane because it means he can land that skew over the wall. So, a bit unfortunate. We'll have to burn his summoner spells to get away from that. So, nicely done by Odie. And kind of just realizing, hey, Levi was going to be on that top side. So, we have the numbers advantage here. Let's see if we can make the plays happen. And that was something we missed out a lot at the kind of mid portion of game number one. That's the thing. It's all positives coming out here for R7. But they are falling behind in terms of the gold. They are not getting the same resources. You can see kind of slight CS leads pretty much everywhere, to be perfectly honest, except for maybe mid lane, but those are the little things, stat and plates that are kind of working against them. And yes, the flashes are good, the plays are solid, but they're not leading to actual tangible advantages. Yeah, I think this though with the Rift Herald coming up is where we're gonna see that change, right? Already you can see Slater's on his way up towards this Rift Herald, whereas when you look at Sayo, he's just kind of gonna try and stick to this bot side. So I'm curious to see if, as Seo shows on this bot wave, if they can change their idea, but... Okay, the E's down now, but we should have plenty of time to kind of reset that one there. Uh, as I say that, I can see the cooldown is 10 seconds or more, so they're maybe not so easy to get that buff back. I mean, still, Kiai is getting good trades with that Sheen proc. Now as they go in, Bong needs to be careful. Wants to try and get the knockback, oh, here we go. He uses ultimate there to try and maybe move away. He's getting some decent movement from it. Levi, no flash kick there, gets him underneath the tower, the last shot shall kill him off, and finally R7 are rewarded for their efforts, they get themselves first blood. So well played by Bong, interrupts with the unstoppable, and able to turn that play around at the end of the day. Really nice stuff, now Pallet is up here on this top side, but not really sure if you can try and get much more done, no jungler here available for Gam, he's kind of need to back away, but... Um, oh, oh, sorry, Odie, and also having the lines here, is going to set things up absolutely beautifully, so... Bit of a weird play from Gam in trying to set that one up, but unfortunately they just go that bit too far forward and it cost them. Cost them a little bit. You can see the idea there from Gam as well. Because the buffering was down on the side of uh, the Cassante, they were like, okay, now we can go for it. And it was immediate flash. And honestly, great reactions from Bong to flash, go into the all out so he knows he can buffer the CC anyway. But again, like you said, just kind of great outplay from R7 to really make that kill come home. And again, just great to see them kind of getting rewarded for their efforts. They are still a little bit behind, but with that Dragon and that Rift Herald confirmed, the neutral objectives are starting to stack. And this is where it's starting to become an issue again for um, for Ga uh, sorry, for R7, where it's like, okay, well, let's, let's say we do, we got control over that top side, and then we have the Rift, sorry, issues for Gam because R7 have the Rift Herald, and they're going to be able to try and play up towards like where Odie is. They got the kill on the top side, which making the uh, Sheen now come through for Bong as well. So your top side is in a much better spot. And now I think it's just a case of trying to get this Rift down onto Sayo and Lines, because realistically, if you can try and get this bot lane shoved in, you'll be able to get the turret play for yourself. And that's why you're looking at Levi already moving down here to try and just cover for the play that R7 are attempting to set up here. Lovely little ward there just behind the um, tri brush on the for Gam just to kind of maybe spot out any kind of movement there from Audi. Does not have flash, but will have kick in a couple of seconds. No six here for Lions, so they know that Audi is here. As I mentioned, there is a ward that just spotted him out, so they're looking for something, but they're not going to be able to get it. The Shattering Strike does end up missing as well. As we can see there, Levi makes his presence known in the mid lane. So we're kind of, again, hitting a bit of a lull. It's pretty even in terms of the gold. and. With a Rift Herald in the back pocket, R7 are going to be feeling pretty good to make something happen, but where? Where do you want to see them put down this objective and try and crack open a turret? Yeah, again, I think it has to be around the spot lane. Like, just try to keep control there is going to be important. We're already saying, look, Slater has a ton of control when it comes to range advantage. Liam's going to be... Oh, they're going to flash in TP as well. They're going to try and put down all the CC and absolutely burn That's the Rakan down. Scatter the weak does not land, and that means the last of the CC isn't going to land onto Seo. But mid lane is now the target. You go and commit everybody there. You can see Audi already setting that one up to try and drop down the Rift Herald. Yeah, they're just going to end up trading this for Dragon, but you do need someone to still clear out this Rift Turtle in mid lane, because if that sticks around, you're going to end up with a couple of extra turret plates. It looks like Kati kind of realizing that, going to move up there to cover. Again, Bong, Gaia going toe to toe, but the fact that you've now got the uh, chain vest on the sheen means these trades aren't as easy for Gaia anymore. And that's three plates as well going over to Miru. So, yes, he's a little bit behind in terms of the completing of, of the items, but I mean, everything was kind of used in that last fight. You don't have uh, the cease and the sis, you don't have the magnet storm, so there was not really much of a kind of a, a counterplay to catch him as he's overextended. This, I want to see exactly how Gam are going to try and wrestle control back of this game. Because I think a, a huge amount of it is going to be a case of like trying to find plays with um, by like down to that bot side, but they need to try and get a little bit more off it. This is just a quick replay of, again, beautiful stuff coming through from Bong. Um, and then Odie here, kick flash right underneath the tower. Just everyone out playing Gam at every step of the way in that equation. But I do think you got to try and 
kind of take that on the chin as Gam and try and figure out how to turn this back around. Gaia has the Divine Sunder up in that top side, alongside the Divine Sunder for Levi. So an opportunity to maybe hit a double whammy up towards Bong, like get Gaia into a position where he can once more kind of escalate how quickly he can take over against Bong in that lane. And also, I think just the fact that Slater and Pallet have been such a strong point for Gam all season long, and now we're looking at them kind of going, well, they never get the resources that they should going through from Levi. I think this is a moment where you do need to try and fix that, because this is a matchup that can punish very, very well if you're able to set up with the ultimate. You get the knock or ultimate from by, lockdown from Pallet to follow, and things should just be an easy pick up there if you can make it happen. We'll wait. I don't expect us to see much action for the next minute or so, just because no real objective. Two minutes to the Herald, three and a half until the Dragon. Teams basically even on gold. Everyone's just kind of happy out to farm for the moment. One minute till the plates do drop. We'll see where everyone kind of stands in terms of their lane economy. But I mean, the first items being completed across the board. Kiaya might look for a bit of a move here. The all out underneath the tower. And as you can see, Kiaya taking a fair chunk of damage. Does have the lead strike to get himself back and away, but he gets put up just once more, and this is a lot closer than the top laner of Gam really wants it to be. You've got the Vi coming up, the wave has been cleared away though. Do they want to go for a fight? Yes they do, they're gonna try and tank it up and take him down. Really well done there by Gam, knowing exactly how to take down the Cassante. Yeah, Gam are trying to respond to any sort of invade from Odie on the bottom side is in response to that play. But uh, it looks like it might just be a kick in behind Kati. Flash is available for Odie, spotted out on ward. Pallet is here, and they keep uh, their mid laner safe. Pushing back and lose a couple of CS, but it's not really the worst in the world. But with Pallet kind of playing between both lanes, it means they're going to try and engage straight away on the Slater, who flashes and gets himself away with the Ghost as well. Audi just doing a quick rotation there. Make sure that he's able to kind of make sure he keeps away. Lion needs to be very careful. Magnet Storm comes in, the Flash Scout of the Week comes out, and there is this unleashed power to make sure they get the kill. Really well done there, and Gam are done playing nice. They want to get this a 2-0. It's looking very much like game number one. Early setup for more seven looking good, but Gam finding their way back into it, turning around these plays for more seven. And there's your MasterCard lane economy, Ushin. Gold galore for Kiaia. They're a massive, actually surprising way to go for Pallet in that bot lane. And it feels like, again, a lot of this game for R7 rests on Miru. Can he perform like he does on his own? I think that gold actually came from this play because he gets yeah. the kill, which kind of swaps the kind of the, 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 the momentum. And I mean, the fact Slater got that flash was incredible. The just about able to eke away from lines, then getting the turnaround. Flash in from Patty here after a great engage from Pallet. And I think the idea here from Odi was, oh, Miru's over the wall, I'm safe, there's nobody there. But uh, hey, Levi easily able to follow up. And it's two quick kills going over. And you're also able to keep that terror safe. Really good play from Gam. It's a thousand gold now lead. It's coming up towards that second Rift Herald, which you can see now everyone's starting to move around. If they can get this and the next dragon, you start to see a bit of deja vu from game number one. You start to feel like Gam are just that little bit more composed in these situations. Miru gets scattered into the weak. He's going to have to flash away after his ultimate because he knew how just how genuinely close he was to death. And Levi wasn't quite able to connect with the Q over the wall, which meant that the, the CC chain didn't land, which gave Miru that opportunity to flash. But Odie's not in the same problem. No, Slater gets caught as well. So that Slater taken out before the fight can really begin. You're going to see Odie using the taxi known as the Rift Herald. Bomb goes all out. Flash by Levi as he gets himself over the wall. Kiaia jumps in and you can see Odie jumping back out. You do have a flash available for Kiaia, so he's just going to try and be a nuisance for the moment. They jump in, but the knockback is good. There's the Magnus Storm to come out and finally Kiaia gets himself out. Kati finally joining in onto the fray. It is all over the place as Kiaia picks up a double. Now you can see them trying to look for this one. Seo and Miru trying to just kite this one out as best they can, but the Shattering Strike shatters Seo's dreams of being the carry, and it's Unleashed Power is almost coming back up as well. They might be able to try and go for this one one more time, and they should be able to confirm the kill here onto Miru. He had no flash, he had no way out, and they are getting everything here on Gam. Kiyayu is doing the hokey pokey in this Rift Carol pit, in, out, in, out, and Aura 7 are shaking all about. They didn't want to dance at all on this one. They thought they'd be able to find the pick, but instead it's Gam who come out on top, and you see here, okay, we're going to try and get the pick on Slater. The charm lands, the knockup comes through. Great pick to start things off. But the problem was, Odie had overextended in towards the jungle. The follow-up here from Kiaia is interrupted, and Odie manages to survive that a little bit longer. But <laughs> watch Kiaia. Okay, so gets 
Fong manages to knock Levi away. So Kiaya goes into the pit, and then is like, wait, no, everyone's gone out. So now he's at the back of the pit, Counter-Strike to keep himself safe, as then Tag Levi in. goes in, but the Fong <laughs> knock back interrupts Levi, so Kiaya flashes out. Then he's like, wait, we win this, and we go back in. So then he starts to fight again. Seo can't really get into this fight because he knows Leap Strike is available for Kiaya. So he leaps out of the pit again, to then walk back into the pit, to then stay at the back of the pit to keep himself safe as the rest of the game end up following up beautifully here with Miru. Unfortunately, getting clipped by the uh, the stun, and then with the knockback, it's doom and gloom for the R7 side. I mean, for Gam though, it is elation. They are feeling so good right now, and there's your team fight damage powered by AWS. I mean, the, the Slater did nothing, but he didn't have to do anything. When you've got a, a Vi doing this amount of work, 3,000 damage at this stage in the game, it's just not needed. Like, it just feels so broken. But, I mean, Levi just having a great series overall. <laughs> he definitely is. And again, he's down on this bot side to try and keep Bong off the tower, so setting up well for Slater. Or 7 going to try and respond by pushing in mid. I think Caddy has to be very careful. I don't think he realizes how many members of R7 are actually up on this top side. He's going to know now that they're no real defending this turret. And he does give fair respect to the side of R7 as they do confirm that one there. It's a 2,500 gold lead for Gam right now. Two dragons to one. They also have a Rift Herald in Levi's back pocket, or his satchel, as uh, Lyric likes to call it, because he doesn't like the back pocket. Um, but What's wrong with a back pocket? I don't know. He had a real thing about it. He's like, why is it always a back pocket? He's like, why can I not have the Rift Herald in a satchel? But that's what I was saying. Well, yeah, well I was like, he was like, why can't I not keep it in a satchel? And I was like, you can do whatever you, can have you want. Satchel, you, know? you can have it in a cross bag. You yeah. can do whatever you, you want. Backpack you backpack know? if you want. Like, uh, or backpack even. Uh, but now Levi going to try and make more presence felt in the spot side is Bong. He's going to try and delay this one a little bit. Levi may have gone a little bit too far forward. No flash for him. So going to use the ultimate there onto Miru as he TP'd in. And actually, a lot of damage. The Unleashed Power, not quite enough, but he's kicking down. He's got so much damage there with the Andrew's Anguish. Not quite able to kill him off. Oh my god, it looks like the screen is glitching. But while that's all been happening, Bong does end up getting taken out. And it's ended up being a 5v4 now. Everyone's in this bot side. Slater feeling confident. Pops the Ghost. Gets charmed immediately. And into a secondary charm. He has no way of saving himself. Cleansed by Seo. Keeps him alive for the moment, Pallet gets the Hex Flash forward. And everyone just kind of backs themselves away. It's a little bit scrappy. R7 will not be happy with going one for one as they did look to try and turn that play. Yeah, I mean, R7 tried to turn it, but Cam, they're getting him to separate themselves out. Levi uses the Unstoppable to get himself out of dodge, and they're able to follow up nicely on that one. And again, this has kind of been the story of a lot of this series is R7 trying to make a play and Gam actually either turning it back, getting something uh, back in their favor. And I know that one obviously started off with Gam attempt to make the play, but it is again, it's like or 7 saying, hey, we can turn this. We have first move from mid. We have the opportunity to make this happen, but Gam kind of outplaying a little bit here. So Bong gets knocked out of the way. He was trying to get the knockback for Levi with the ultimate, but that doesn't really work out until now. But at this stage, you're still 3v3, but katty has got a ton of damage, kiaya has got a, a massive amount of damage, and Odi just can't really bring enough to the fight, and Slater and Pallet then show up, but uh, Miru, this was genius, like, hides in the bush, drops down a pink to make sure he won't be spotted, and they're able to get the charm then to get at least their kill back in their face. I want to know how much HP Miru had, I need to know how much HP Miru had at the end, because it, could literally, it literally looked like zero, and I think it was almost, that. I'm, I'm going to say single digits, but... At the end of it all, it's still three and a half thousand gold lead. It's still Gam getting everything in they want and dropping the Shirley uh, in the mid lane, uh, getting that terror confirmed for themselves. And this is the thing: like you look at the way R7 are building. You know, you've got the Everfrost from Miru. Yes, he does a little bit of damage, but it's not going to be the same kind of power that you get with something like a Syndra having that Leandri's Anguish alongside their AD carry. Yeah, a huge portion of what I want to see though at the moment is: look, you're going to get the resets. I want Jax to move down onto this bot lane and make sure that he can get push. I want to see them get full mid control and then push that in towards the top side control as well. And then start to set up vision here, all in this quadrant. So then you can actually be in a position where, okay, now Gam can set up for Dragon, or sorry, sorry, for Baron. They're going to be in an okay position to actually try and threaten over towards the Dragon that's going to be up soon as well. But it's just, once you can guarantee that mid priority, you're in a really good spot to make sure that you're okay on the map to contest, well, one, some vision for Baron to make sure R7 aren't going to try and burst that down. But two, also be able to then fall back in towards this bottom side and keep control up for the Dragon. So far, Gam. Looks like they're doing almost exactly what you talked about right there. Pushing in as a four-man into mid, pushing top lane with Kiaia, so he gets priority there. And maybe moving in towards it. They got a little bit of good vision there around the Baron pit, but nothing too 
exceptional. Need strike comes down. It's Kiaia just kind of looking to confirm this turret. I, yeah, I do think with a minute to dragon, this is actually probably more correct. I didn't cop the dragon was only up in a minute's time. So this is actually the correct call. Is basically Kiaia away from objective because he'll have his TP back up in a moment's time, and then you'll be in a position to connect, collect dragon. So that's about to spawn. I would prefer more members in mid though to just guarantee the push here because you can see a lot of our seven are now able to clear out that wave and they'll be able to get mid priority, which forces Gam to then fall back to their tier two, and they won't be able to commit to this as hard. Well, Dragon spawning. We'll see if Miru can get out with as little HP as he did last time. It was five, by the way. Five HP the last wow. time, yeah. So it was as close as close can be. Uh, thank you so much to our EVS operator, Arthur, for confirming that for me. But now we come back in 5v5 in this mid lane. Bong's already TP'd in. We have a full pallet, excuse the pun, of summoners available for everybody. This is what I was talking about. Or 7 get mid prio. They move it to River. They're clearing out the vision. And for Gam, this is not where you want to be. Watch Odie. He's the guy that wants to try and get on towards Slater. And with the Infernal Rift, there's so many different angles of attack. Yeah, you can see Lions just moving around, putting Pallet away from the fight. The Unstoppable comes in, they jump in onto Minoru, and they're trying to burst him down. Knock up there and Charm onto the two carries, and all out comes out, but Minoru is already dead. It's going to be the mid laners, not quite traded just yet, because the Vi comes in to save the day. That's cleansed in as Kiaya gets shut down, but look at Slater and the rest of Gam pushing in, pushing forward. Seo quite literally playing on the edge of his health bar. Lion says, go on without me, you need to survive, but Slater is his name, and he's Lays him down. Double kill in here for Gam's AD carry as he looks to completely take control of this game. They want to chase Odie out of this jungle area, get back over towards the dragon and pick that one up. Katsy has already moved in towards the mid lane to keep that wave pushed in as well. Beautiful stuff from Gam on that play. Kiaia doing a ton of work in the back line. You'll see here, Levi is about to get charmed off of that flick back. So he goes, right, we got to go in. Hala flashing forward, Kiaia flashing forward, immediately gets on towards Miru. And at that stage, Kiaia now, well, he's got easy access to sail. Everyone, Bong, trying to get on towards the back line to answer for the play is totally fine. But unfortunately, it's just, you've got nothing left in the tank to try and keep this Jax off sail. Flash, cleanse, and the ultimate all burnt before this. So he's just running for the hills, doing whatever he can to try and get away from this. But Slater flashing forward to finish that one. And I think the big thing for Gam is that the way they fight these fights is just so enabling for Slater. He used all of his ultimate, or he didn't even use his ultimate, but he uses all of his abilities so aggressively. And it does feel like if R7 can put pressure on the AD carry of Gam, that's when they have a bit of advantage to get into these fights. It's also just how coordinated they are. Now, Kiaia might need to get out of here solo, though. Not quite landing the Sonic Wave, and Naughty doesn't feel confident to really go for that one after the fact as the rest of Cam were coming in to uh, be a bit of a cavalry to their top laner there. All four, all four other members moving themselves up. But I mean, look at the stopwatch. It's like, Gam, no, it's one good fight away from them basically winning this game. As we can see now, Lions tries to get a little bit fancy with the footwork, gets himself over the wall with the leap strike into the counter strike. They're going to have to use the charm. They're going to have to use everything they possibly can to keep their, uh, the support alive. They just can't say, oh, he's in no man's land and he's been caught and killed. There's the unleashed power and now you've lost your AD carry can you take the fight after the fact that is the question the kick there on the Kiaia does mean he goes down the charm is good to get down onto Levi they're gonna have to try and back themselves away nice again with the scatter of the week from Kati but they've lost themselves they you know still have a jungler they still have themselves an opportunity but Gam they have total control Gam are gonna move over towards this Baron great pick from them again turning it around what or seven were trying to at least get something back but it's now gonna be yeah, Odo, he's too far away. Like, this is going to go down too quickly, I think, before he gets here. Bong and Miru Palette. need to make a play to slow this. Palette, scatter the weak. I have the flash over the wall. And to see if they can maybe make this one work. They're getting decent damage. Bong flashes away. But again, for R7, that's fine. That's okay. They stopped the Baron from going down. That's all they wanted to do. Yeah, and again, because Odi's now here, they don't want to try and follow up on this. They have to be careful, though, because with R7 coming off of resets, it could be R7 who immediately turn on to they Baron. They have to. They that's, have to. And that's exactly why they're trying to slow these retreats, so then they can be the ones to start it up. TP is available for Kiaia. Flanks. Great warp spot. Yeah, Flanks coming in. They know that Pink Ward is there. The charm doesn't land. And now they're going to get another scout of the week. Kati has been insane with these CC chains. And now they can really look for the fight. The all out comes out as Bong looks to jump on the Kati. Double stopwatch is used. And then they can really re-engage. Seo just has nowhere to go, nowhere to be. 
And I mean, R7, they had to go for it. They do lose Cassie in the back of it as the all-out from Bomb did work out, but he's got no HP. He can't re-engage this. Oh, he's still in the area, though. You can see him. He's on that top plate pushing now. That's why Lions has been sent up. Or, sorry, Pallet has been sent up to try and deal with them. But what can he do? Kiaia now says, <laughs> no way are you getting in the back door here. You do not have to go home, mate, but you can stay here. That is the most bouncer front line I've ever seen there from Kiaia and Pallet. They were not letting Odi into the Baron Club. And that is going to be the Red Bull Baron power play going over to Gam as they look to push themselves to a 2-0. I mean, really, Gam have shown up here. Again, this is their revenge from MSI. And unfortunately, we couldn't get it yesterday coming through for uh, <laughs> the son of Junja. But here for, for Gam, it looks like revenge might be on the cards. Again, the loser here is knocked out entirely from the play-in tournament. And a 4-7 fall here for the, the LLA, unfortunately, not able to continue forward. Gotta find something, but it just feel like every turn they go for it, it does come down to small little mistakes. Like if they clear those wards before they go into that, then it's they don't get the flank, they don't get caught out. It's little things like that. It is unfortunately the, the way League of Legends work. It's a game of small mistakes. It's not about, you know, massive misplays and sometimes it's an outplay, but it really does feel like it's those small little moments that do define a series as the charm down, but Crash down here from Pala keeps him safe. And I mean, you have to fight for this dragon in a minute's time. You can't let this Infernal Soul go over against the Syndra. You'll just be, it's over. But again, the Syndra pick has been doing so much value against R7. You heard on the desk, we keep seeing R7 going for these front to back fights, which is perfect for Syndra. Although this one, a bit more spread out. Oh, they're going to look to try and fully engage. There's going to flash in, scatter the weak. Slater there to try and take everybody else out. And they're all being pinched in. Everyone being jumped around on top of this one here. The feathers fly. And that is going to be Sale getting dropped down one more time. He hasn't been allowed to play the game. And while that's all been happening there, just jumping onto Bong, who does go all out and tries to turn this one around. He is a Cassante, and he will be able to get one kill. But I mean, it's a consolation prize at the best possible scenario. And that's going to be the inhibitor towers going down. I don't know if they're going to be able to end the game just yet, but I mean, it's total control here from Gam. Yeah, I mean, Gam again set up a beautiful pick. I have to give a shout out to Bong, though, not even just for the kill. Like, every single time that these fights have been happening, he's been desperately trying to keep his team safe, but he's just not been able to do so. Even that one, as Miru oh, goes down, Bong is trying to keep him safe with jumping onto the back line, but yeah, Odi, there's no way into here. Yeah, he's got to be a Wait, hero. Now there's yeah, a way into there. there's a way in there. Pallet <laughs> went away. They have to go in. He has to go for it, he doesn't try and do it in the end. I feel like he had to try, but I, mean, I don't know, maybe it's a, a game of inches, but let's have but a look at this yeah, replay. I want to watch Bong here, because again, like, Miru does get caught here, but Bong immediately jumps onto Kati with the Unstoppable, which means that Kati actually can't follow up to get the Unleashed Power onto Miru. But it, the problem is, is that everyone in Gamma is just too far ahead. Slater is in the perfect position to follow up on that one. You can't really do anything. And even in the 1v2, the fact you still managed to come out with a kill here says a lot about what Bong is attempting to achieve. But Gam, unfortunately, the rest of the team is just way too far ahead. Yeah, and honestly as well, you saw that uh, the Rakan went in with Bong as well. So it meant that you had no kiting. You had no one to kind of delay the, the, the inevitable yeah. kind of push in there for the rest of R7's carries. So it just feels like they're just not going to be able to kind of come out of a 10,000 gold now for, for Gam. An infernal soul as well. You can see just a slight combination, enough to bring down Audi to two thirds of his HP, and that's before the power gets unleashed. And that's even before you have things like Rabadons or Void Staff even yeah. added into the equation. So, and again with the changes we saw to Syndra, she scales relatively well now because again she's going to pick up a ton of AP off her passive and everything. So, I mean this Syndra is definitely no pushover at the moment. Audi standing tall. For a short while in front of that terror yeah. <laughs> before he goes, actually, you know what, I don't want to be. It's like when you try to start a fight and you realize the guy is much bigger than you and you're just like, all right, I'm going to be the bigger man. But they got to go for a long last fight. But immediately, Bong gets CC'd up and there's nothing he can do. Kati goes golden with the stopwatch. Double kill comes in here for Slater. Maybe he wants a little bit more. They're going to try and get Seo on this backside, trying to do as best he possibly can. There's Levi moving forward. It's a triple kill here for Slater. It's a quadra kill for Slater. Penta kill! For Slater! He gets himself right back on the map, and it's the League of Pentacles here in the play-ins. The Death said they wanted to see more from Slater. They wanted to see Slater step up. They wanted to see Gam step up. And with a 2-0 win and a pentakill to boot, the VCS will guarantee themselves one more opportunity at qualifying to the main stage. And this is the Gam we wanted to see. This is the Gam that everyone kind of has nostalgia glasses for. They loved rose-tinted glasses to look back on and remember just how fun they were, how genuinely kind of 
kind of dominant they were against the other kind of emerging regions. So really, really good to see them coming in. And honestly, a great marker for them to kind of say, no, 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 we're not washed up just yet. Team Wales aren't the only VCS team. We're still the champs. I mean, Team Wales, GAM, both coming in from the VCS. The PCS looking absolutely fantastic with PSG talent and Flying Oyster. And we still have one more series to try and go before we find out exactly what's happening. Like, this is such a banger of a play-ins. And to see these teams step up with pentakills on both sides is absolutely insane. Look, when there are winners, there are unfortunately losers. R7 and the LLA are out of Worlds 2023. It's unfortunate, it is unfortunately the way competition works. There has to be winners and losers, and look for R7. They gave as much as they possibly could, it just wasn't good enough on the day, unfortunately. But look, again, this was kind of the rematch from MSI. They picked up their first ever best of win against GAM, and unfortunately now they got smacked back with that yeah. same. So they will be going home, but I think for LLA, they should be proud of how they've done, right? Like we got to see them step up across multiple different opportunities. We got to see kind of Miro having his performance and tried to carry things on the Ari here today, but the VCS proves too strong once more. They do indeed, and it came off of the back of our play Oppo player of the series, Kati with his Syndra stuns. The amount of flash scatter the weeks that he did yeah. was honestly insane. I mean, even this, like the solo kill in game number one, then the amount of opportunities that he set up coming through from those scatter the weeks. But again, I like, he just was positioned so well. Or seven continues he trying to like funnel through in these front to back oh. team fights. And he was just like, fantastic. I will take them. Three man stuns, four man stuns, having the opportunities to just pick people off. And I think there's um, a lot of opportunities where just the fact that he was so strong coming into these was setting up with the unleashed powers to pick off kills that otherwise never would have happened. I mean, you saw it kind of like a while into this game where. Is, uh, R7 had a game plan, which was don't fight around Kati. Bong just went and said, I'm going to take this guy out. I'm going to make sure he can't do anything about it. But it didn't matter because he was just so aggressive, so far accelerated that by the time he was even taken out of the fight, the rest of the team were going, cool, we're, we're super fed as well. We're going to take everyone else. I do want to give a shout out to Bong, though, because yeah. honestly, I think he actually had a really, really good series. It was just unfortunate that the rest of the team couldn't quite keep themselves up to scratch when it came towards like damage or being able to manage their lane state. So you can kind of see there like 22,000 damage on the Cassante. He was trying his hardest, but unfortunately Kati matching him with the damage, Kiaia having that performance as well, made it very difficult for him to really carry that one forward. And now Gam, they move one step closer. They're not quite the best of fives just yet, but they are getting very, very close. But after the break, we'll be back with Team BDS against DFM. But first, let's have a behind the scenes recap of yesterday's action through the lens of the Oppo Cam. against a king. Seeing against believing. A moment against a moment for the ages. Countless battles, one arena, the realm. The only thing capable of powering the game, the stage, the broadcast, and the worldwide spectacle we know and love, AKA the Cisco Network.
Red Bull gives you wings. Unlock Extra Loot with the World's Event Pass. Every Event Pass purchase will add to the prize pool for Worlds 2023. There's a lot to celebrate at this time of year. Huh? What is this?